This video takes a look at the road ahead. Is it inflation or deflation? If you want to watch the full 20 minute version, please go to www.pring.com. Throughout history, US industrial commodity prices and bond yields have alternated between secular bull and bear trends. History in this case goes back to the mid 19th century. I'm going to start with bonds because yields have been in a secular downtrend for close to 30 years. In terms of time served, they're therefore well overdue for a turnaround. The series plotted in this chart is the US government 30 year constant maturity, spliced to a 20 year series prior to 1994. Its ticker symbol is TYX, or on yahoo.com, carrot sign, followed by TYX. One technique that can help identify secular trend reversals at a relatively early stage is to construct long-term trend lines on the 240-month rate of change, which is also a 20-year rate of change. And when such ROC violations are confirmed by a similar trend line break in the yield, a reversal signal is triggered, like this. As you can see in the fall of 2010, it's once again possible to construct a line for both series. Since they're intact, so is the secular downtrend in yields. Another way in which secular trend reversals of bond yields can be monitored is to compare the nine-month exponential moving average, the EMA, of the yield to its 96-month EMA. Bullish and bearish periods identified in this way are represented on the chart by the green and red highlights. It's worth noting that the yield itself has been trading below the 96-month moving average for several decades. It's made many attempts at an upside crossover, but each time it's been rebuffed. This reversal ability by the average increases its significance as a dynamic resistance area. When that EMA trendline zone is finally cracked, I believe it will signal an end to the current secular downtrend in yields. Right now, the trend line and moving average are resting in the 4.65% area, and the October 2010 reading for the U.S. 30-year government bond series was close to 4%. A secular reversal signal may be at hand, but what of the cyclical trend? In this respect, this chart shows our master yield series, which is constructed from a simple average of government, AAA, BAA, and commercial paper yields. The KST, or smooth momentum, generally reflects the cyclical trend of the master yield series quite well. In this respect, these arrows show that reversals from an extended level have, over the last 50 years, offered reliable indications of primary bull markets and yields. Currently, the indicator is overextended, and therefore perfectly positioned to trigger a primary bull signal for yields. Now we'll turn our attention to the secular trend in commodities. This chart features the CRB spot raw industrials. During the last 200 years or so, there have been nine secular bull and bear markets, as flagged by the arrows. And we're now in the tenth. For identification of secular trend reversals, we could use crossovers of a long-term moving average, such as a 96-month time span. But even that would trigger numerous unwanted whipsaws. So a better approach involves a long-term oscillator. This one's constructed by dividing a 60-month by a 360-month moving average. Secular momentum buy and sell signals are triggered when the oscillator crosses above and below its 48-month moving average. They are flagged by these green and red arrows. As long as this momentum series is rising, it's assumed that the secular trend is bullish and vice versa. At present, the oscillator is moving up, but is not particularly overextended, and that suggests that the secular trend is at a relatively early phase. The signal we would look for to trigger a reversal would be a break below the two converging trend lines, which is obviously some way off. For that, we turn to this chart, which compares the CRB spot raw industrials to the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, the OECD, normalized leading indicators. This composite leading indicator for global growth, or lack thereof, provides early signals of global economic turning points. 
the green and red highlights indicate when this global economic measure is rising or falling and shows there is an excellent correlation between global economic activity and dollar-based industrial commodity prices. Currently, the OECD series is moving higher, but it's moderately overstretched. That suggests that the cyclical bull market has further upside potential. However, the chart shows that the three previous secular uplegs in 1971-74, to 1975-80, to and 2001-2008 to indicate that some of the best gains were reserved for the terminal months of those primary bull markets. In two of those instances, the red highlights show that prices peaked after the OECD series, so the rally may last well into 2011. Long-term trends of commodity prices and bond yields move in the same direction the vast majority of the time. So as a general rule, it's usually safe to assume that if commodity prices are in a sustainable uptrend, bond yields will be in one as well. But having said that, it's also evident that commodities tend to lead bonds at secular turning points. You can see that in this chart, which features government bond yields and commodity prices. The two previous secular bull markets and bond yields were both preceded by a secular low in commodity prices. Of course, when we're limited to just two data points, we have to be careful about making projections. But the eight-year lead between the 2000 secular low in commodities and that of late 2008 for yields is certainly consistent with the two prior instances. And now we turn to the relationship between commodities and bonds, the ultimate inflation-deflation relationship. And it's shown in this chart. As you can see, trend line violations in the past have reliably signaled reversals in the secular trend of this relationship. The ratio has been in a trading range for the last 30 years and is now approaching the upper end for the fifth time. If it punches through, such action will represent a major long-term inflationary signal. And that's because it will denote the outperformance of commodities over bonds for years to come. Note how the green and red arrows flag when the oscillator has crossed above and below its moving average. And they've offered some pretty timely and accurate signals of reversals in the secular trend, with the notable exception of the false signal in the 1960s. As you can see, the oscillator is currently in the early phase of a secular advance and could certainly support a significant upside breakout by the ratio before becoming overbought. Finally, this chart shows that secular trend line violations in the commodity bond ratio have usually coincided with those in the 20-year government bond series. Currently, the secular trend for yields is still down, but if the ratio does break above the upper area of its 30-year trading range, the odds of a reversal in yields would be overwhelming. If you've enjoyed this presentation, you might want to go to pring.com if you're not there already, and download a sample copy of our Intermarket Review, a monthly roundup of the world's principal financial markets with a special emphasis on the US. We also look at global indicators, bonds, precious metals, currencies and international markets using ETFs to execute our strategies as much as possible. You'll find unique indicators and intermarket relationships you cannot find anywhere else. In the meantime, thanks for watching and good luck and good charting.